Good morning. Wow. We're here. We'll, we'll generate our own light this morning since there's precious of it outside. And uh, with that window out for repairs, there's even less, but we're okay. Um, so welcome to worship at First Church this morning. Uh, glad that you are here. I hope that when you came in, you not only picked up a bulletin, but also a stone. These are not for throwing. I am not preaching on that text. Preaching on something completely different. So just hold on to it till we get to the sermon and beyond. Other announcements are printed in the bulletin, and I'm just going to ask you to, to look over those things. <clears throat> there is something coming up that's called Marriage Check-In, and that's going to happen on Saturday, February the 10th, up in the youth room. And it's a time for couples to get together for sharing, and they'll start with breakfast, and then a program, and end with lunch. So it's kind of like a mini retreat for, for couples. So. I want you to be aware of that. I'm going to ask Randy Culler to come up and share uh, an exciting announcement about what happened here yesterday uh, with the soup and other stuff sale. Good morning. Good morning. I am amazed and, and we are so blessed to have such a supportive church. We, we did so well yesterday with our soup sale, um, and you know half of that, or better than half of that, is going to Ryan Sanchez for his ministry with release time. We made $2,800. And, but it, 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 it was all you guys. Um, you supported us, and we so much appreciate that. And I just want to thank you so much from, from our Sunday school class and from Ryan for doing that. Um, we still have some, a little bit of soup left. If you want to see me after church, uh, we, we only have a couple different kinds. There's still more desserts out there, I'm sure, when you walk past. And then we still have some baskets that the, the class put together that if you want to take a look at those. So, again, thank you so, so very much. That's wonderful. Well, let's prepare ourselves for worship as we listen to our prelude in the presence of Jehovah.
If you're able, I invite you to stand with me as we share our call to worship. Who may worship in your sanctuary, Lord? Who may enter your presence on your holy hill? Those who refuse to gossip, or harm their neighbors, or speak evil of their friends. Such people will stand firm forever. Let's join together in our prayer. Eternal Father, we praise you for sending your Son to be like us in our humanity and to save us. Look upon your people with mercy, for we are divided in so many ways, and give us the Holy Spirit to make us one in love. We ask this gift, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Christ has the power to make us one in love. It's not easy, but it's possible. He also uh, makes us one in, in, in peace. And so this morning I say to you, the peace of Christ be with you. Let's share that peace with each other. It's time for our children's message, if any of our children would like to join us. Oh, there he comes. He's coming. He didn't want to be early. He comes when he's cute. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Elsie. Oh. Oh, okay. Interesting. All right. She's in a good mood this morning. I'm happy to see that. How is everybody today? Thumbs up, thumbs down, middle thumb, good, two thumbs up. Awesome, oh, middle thumb. Ooh. How about you, thumbs up? Oh, it was just a smile, so that's good. I'll take that. All right, so today I'm gonna ask you, who made you? Who made you? You can say it loud, you wanna Pass the, you, do you want to say it into the microphone? Who made you? No, you don't want to say it? Anybody want to say it into the microphone? God. God made you. That's right. And did he make you for a reason? Shrug. Bud, did God make you for a reason? Good go. <laughs> Micaiah says that is not the reason he made you because Nathan said dodo which is dimple and God did not make you well he, he made you to be a good brother that could be a reason I, I'm going to say that that answer was acceptable I'm going to accept that answer judges accept it does anybody else have a, a reason that God made them that they would like to share with us no, I'm not calling, I'm not giving you the microphone again, Nathan. One answer is good enough. Anybody else want to share why God made them? Wow. Not many, no, no answers? Oh, I always love when you guys share the answers because your answers are always so much more interesting and fun than mine are. Okay, well... One of the most greatest purposes that God made you for is to give glory to him so that you can reflect his glory in the world. So, you were made to shine. Shine! I'm sure you have heard that here in First Lights at First Church, that you were made to shine. You were made to shine God's light into the dark world and help others come to know him. But we're also made to find joy in God, right? When you come to church, when you come to Sunday school, when you spend time with God, when you learn about God, when you read the Bible, when you pray to him, you're supposed to find joy in that too. It's not supposed to be like work right? It's not supposed to be like a job. You're supposed to find joy in that. And then when you shine your light to everybody, but, but you keep your shoes on. That is not joyful for anybody. <laughs> keep your shoes on. <laughs> that's, um, that's taking me, my mind way off things. But our purpose in being made by God is to be made in his image so that we can show others who God is, and also to find joy in who God is, right? So let's pray. Dear God, we are so grateful that you created us in your image, and we, we want to 
learn about you and know you so that we can reflect that image to others. And we want to find joy in learning and knowing about you. Thank you, God, for First Church so that we can come here and be joyful as we learn and know about you. And we pray that we are joyful as we reflect your image to others. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, I hope you have a gr great, okay, great week. <laughs> Don't be in such a rush to leave me or run me over. Thank you, Brianna. Let's come before the Lord this morning in quiet prayer. <clears throat> Lord, we're grateful that you have chosen us to be with you, and you've chosen us to be together. You've placed us in your family. You created something you called a church, of which we are a part. Lord, help us today to have a deepening love and affection for, for not only you, but for one another as members of the body of Christ, the church. Um, your kingdom, your people. Uh, Lord, we pray that we would see who we are in Christ with greater clarity. And Lord, we pray that you would also help us to recognize how others are part of this body too. That as we gather for worship this morning, we gather in this location while other Members of your family are gathering in other locations under different kinds of names, but all of us under the name of Christ. So Lord, give us a, a greater deepening love for, for the body in which you've placed us, the church. And we pray, Lord, not just for the church here in Chambersburg or in the United States, but the church in its manifestation all across the world speaking different languages and having different customs and cultures that are expressed in the way that they worship. Lord, help us to, to pray for each other. In a world such as ours today, there is such a deep need for the church, your body, the body of Christ, to be as vibrant and as strong, as loving uh, as we possibly can be. So help your church, Lord, to be what you alone can make us so that the world will come to know Christ. We pray for peace around the world, but Lord, in, in our hearts we know that it's really only in Christ that ultimately peace is going to come. And so, Lord, we pray for your reign to expand, and we pray, Father, for peace to come into the hearts of men and women and children across the world, and that that they'd come to know you. We pray for places where there's war. We pray for Israel for protection, for the innocent Palestinians for protection, for people in Ukraine and other places in the world where there's outright war and places where there's hidden war or um, covert war and violence. We pray, Lord, for your peace to settle in, for people to hear the message of Christ in ways that would amaze us. Help us, Lord, where we are right here in Chambersburg to do everything we can to be witnesses of your love for us in Christ so that people might know uh, their reason for being created, um, that we, are, we exist, Lord, to glorify you and to be support for each other. Bless us this day. Strengthen us. Lift us up. Help us to be for each other what we were called to be and to honor you and everything that we do. For we ask this in the name of the one who gave everything for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 25, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor about your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Um, those words from Jesus are good reminders to us that uh, we don't need to worry because God knows what we need and he's more than able to provide and he, abide, he provides for us even more than we need. But out of the blessing of God, we come this morning and present to him our thanksgiving, our, our tithes and our offerings. Let's come before the Lord uh, this morning as we present those gifts to him, thankful uh, for his provision in our life. morning <clears throat> I can clear my throat um, the choir song this morning um, is titled all of our tomorrows it, since it's a blend of parts that overlap and <clears throat> peats and phrases we thought you might miss the beautiful and meaningful lyrics so we're going to do something different this morning I'm going to read you the lyrics first then you can better appreciate the song this, this spinning world by your own hand hurls ever on around the sun. The seasons march at your command. The old departs, the new year comes. And though celestial is your gaze, you search and care for all our ways. We offer up to you this day and all of our tomorrows. May zealous youth and cautious age determine not the steps we choose. Great shepherd, guide us through each day. Oh, how we want to follow you. Come, living way, our way make clear. Let perfect love drive out our fear. Be thou our vision now and here and all of our tomorrows. When winter makes us reminisce of warmer days so distant now, of cherished saints the sun once kissed, whose beauty passed behind the clouds. Let all our fond and longing tears remind us we are pilgrims here. We trust you, sovereign of our years, with all of our tomorrows. O oh, hands to the plow we are pressing on, and running hard to win the prize. Empowered by the love of God with grace behind and grace beside. For lo, what hope before us stands, you finish all that you began. Eternal joy is in your hands, your hands, and all of our tomorrows. Please enjoy all of our tomorrow.
We thank you, O God, for the place that you've given to us to hold in your kingdom and the opportunities that there are for us to serve you. We thank you for this opportunity to give, to share what you've blessed us with, that others might find blessing in you. For we give these gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. Remain standing as Bob Four comes forward to read our morning scripture. Today's scripture is from 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special procession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Once 
you were not a people, but now you are a people of God. Once you had received, had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Would you bow with me for a word of prayer? Lord, we thank you for your word that is ever relevant to us, that speaks to our need, to our living, brings blessing to us and peace and hope. Let your word have its way in our lives this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So last week we were talking about, uh, in chapter 1, of Peter's appeal uh, for us to live holy lives. Uh, We're called to holiness. We're called to be different. We're called to be set apart. We're called to make a difference in this world just by our living, by the contrast that's shown in our choices and words and actions and deeds and love. And so when we move into this passage, uh, the second chapter, the first three verses really could go in the first chapter. Uh, And so I just, but we need to recognize that what Peter is saying, this is what you're called to. And now here in these first three verses of the second chapter, he is saying how it happens. Uh, how, How does this happen that we begin uh, to live holy lives so that we put into place the, the, the life of Christ in ourselves. And it begins by putting off things. You know, if we're going to put on a robe of righteousness, we have to take off a robe of sin. We have to uh, determine in ourselves that we're going to, something's got to change in us. And so um, Peter says uh, to uh, these Christians, he says, therefore, since you've called to be lo- uh, holy, uh, get rid of all their malice, uh, all the deceit, all the hypocrisy, all the envy, all the slander. You know, were to not be identified as Christians as those things. Those things in us, in our attitudes, and there's a lot more that you could add to the list or I could add to the list of things that I know God would like me rid of in my life. And the reason they need to be gotten rid of for me is because they're the things that make me like everybody else in the world. But Christ wasn't like everybody else in the world. Christ was different, and because Christ is different, I need to be different. Because God is holy, I need to be holy. And so I need to take away these things that make me blend in with everybody and pull me down and set me not only, uh, you know, at odds with God, but set me right along with everybody else that hasn't found Christ. And instead, Paul or Peter says, I'm supposed to be uh, in, in this, in this sense, like a newborn baby craving um, pure spiritual milk. Now, of course, this is early on. And a lot of these were new Christians and, um, that's what they could handle. Um, and that gets referenced later in other passages of Scripture about moving on from milk to meat. But the, the point that Peter's making here is that you have to start someplace and you need to desire it. Do I desire uh, the spiritual milk, the Word of God, the thing that's going to help me to grow in my salvation? I'm more and more relying not on my old nature, the old way of doing things, with all of that malice and deceit and hypocrisy, envy and slander, but instead with this this maturing spirit that's helped me to grow in my salvation because I've tasted and seen that the Lord is good, that there's something better with God than anything I've found any place else. God is good, not... You know, better than all the stuff I'm called to get rid of and move from. The maturity in Christ really is the best way for me to avoid a life burdened by sin and its consequences. 
Growing up in Christ, growing up in God, the more that we do that, the further we are from those things that pull us down. So that's how Peter transitions from this call to be holy uh, to this now being chosen to be together. We're chosen to be holy, but we're also chosen to live this life of holiness um, together. And the way that Peter gets at that is by using a metaphor of a building. And in that metaphor, including in it a relationship that we have with Christ and with each other. And the image that he uses is this image of a stone. Now, when you walked in, I may ask you to make sure that you picked up a stone. If you have a stone, lift it up. Just pick up your stone. And I... I I wanted to have these just as a reminder to take it with you today. Of, and this can be a reminder of a number of things. It could be a reminder of the fact that in my relationship with Christ, that Jesus is, for me, the foundational cornerstone of my life. Peter says... As you come to him, that is, as you come to Christ, the living stone, a stone rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So this stone that you hold in your hand, could be a reminder to you of that Christ is the foundational stone of your life and that having come to Christ, believing in Jesus, that now you are a living stone. You're not the cornerstone, but you're a stone in the building that he's bringing together. This is the metaphor that, that Peter is using to help us to realize that we were chosen not to be individual stones, but that we were chosen to be brought together to create something that God is doing. Now, first, let's talk about the most important stone in the building, the cornerstone. And the way that Peter describes the cornerstone, which is Jesus, is that first... He was rejected. He was rejected by human beings, and, but in contrast, he was chosen and precious to God. Jesus was never valued for who he was by, so, by the religious leaders of his day, but he was always chosen and precious to God. Now, I am not in any shape or form a stonemason, and, but I've worked with them. When I was a teenager, my first job was to work with a guy who was a stonemason. And um, we laid concrete and we you know, built walls and stuff like that. And usually it was cinder blocks that we were using. Um, but I also have done work in Haiti with masons. And believe me, when I say work with, I was the guy who carried the mud. That's what I did. I was not the guy very often that was putting things together. But I was helping give them the re carrying the stones, carrying the bricks, carrying the mortar, so that they could put together what they were doing, what their expertise was. And I, but from observation, I've, I know that the, it requires an eye to be a stone mason, to be a worker of stone, to get the right kind of stone for the right place in the wall uh, so that it fits with others. And to also know that some stones are good and some stones are not. Some stones have fissures in them or cracks and they're going to crumble and those are cast aside or some are too thin or some are too thick and so some get rejected and some are found useful. And the people who should have known rejected Christ um, not because there was any imperfection in him but there were great imperfections in them. Christ is the most important, metaphorically speaking, and, and in truth, metaphorically speaking of stones, of all of creation, the most important person who ever lived, the most important person who ever created anything in the world, and the most important stone that Peter is imagining as he describes this building that we're a part of. He's the cornerstone. 
who was rejected. Now, when we think of cornerstones, um, we think of maybe the cornerstone that's in this building, um, out here someplace that has maybe a date on it. And that's what cornerstones have come to be uh, known and, and used. But a cornerstone in ancient times was the first stone that was set in the construction of a foundation. And all the other stones would be set in reference to that cornerstone. And so that stone determined the position of the entire structure, the way it was laid out. And sometimes it was laid out by the points of the compass or whatever, and so the cornerstone would be the one that was the reference stone for all the other stones the foundation uh, uh, was built upon. Um, and of course, over time, that became more of a ceremonial thing than any, but in the days of Christ, the days of, that Peter's writing about, it was foundationally set, uh, and everything was in reference to it. Jesus is that. Jesus is that for us, and Jesus is that for the church. Everything we do as we're built together is in reference to Jesus, and if it's not, then the building falls apart. The building won't stand. It's our faith in Jesus that's most important. When Jesus responded to Peter when he said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, and he said, your name is Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church, he wasn't talking about Peter, He's talking about Peter's faith. He was talking about the declaration that Peter made of who Jesus was. Basically saying, you're the cornerstone. You're the most important person. And I'm going to fix my life to that. It's that faith in Jesus upon which everything else relies in the life of the church, in the life of the Christian. We find our place in God's building, temple, family, kingdom, whatever other way you want to describe God's people, by our relationship through faith to Jesus Christ. It's our faith in Jesus, the most important person who ever lived, the only one who ever died for you, the only one who ever died for the sins of the world, that sets us into the building, the family, the kingdom. And verse, says, verse 6 says that trusting in him spares us from the shame that we might have felt had we rejected him along with everybody else that rejected him. Believing in Jesus sets us in God's family. Look at the contrast. If you look at those verses from 8 to uh, the end of the chapter. Trusting in him, we don't have the shame of falling. That so many others have fallen through Christ is an offense to a lot of people. And it seems like it's getting worse and worse as time goes by. People take offense at Christ and at those who carry his message because they don't believe, they disobey the message of salvation. They don't have faith that Jesus was the chosen, precious, foundational stone person who God has sent to save you and me and them. We are... Peter says, because of our faith in Christ, because of our position in the church, we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. That's a wonderful description. Can you, do you think of yourself like that often? I don't. But that's what the scriptures say you and I are. We're chosen. We're royal in our priesthood. We're holy as a nation. We're a special belonging to God. And all of that is because God has given us a purpose. And that was great what Brianna said to the kids. Because it reflected this scripture. Our purpose is declaring God's praise. The God who called us out of darkness into wonderful light. See the contrasts here? You know, once we were living in darkness not knowing who we were, now we're called in, by accepting Christ into this marvelous light. We weren't a people at one time. Now we are God's people. We hadn't received mercy at one point in our life, but by faith in Christ we've been given mercy and we're saved. These things we share, these things we hold together, these things we were chosen for, and 
hold us, bind us. We're built together, you and me, in the body of Christ, not just First Church, but the church around the world. We are a people with an identity. We're a people who are called to a standard of living, of holiness. We are even called royal priests, which means that our service is to a king. And you know, we're called to, as, as uh, Peter says earlier, a royal priesthood um, offering spiritual sacrifices to God through Jesus Christ. Everything we do is a gift of God, a gift to God through Christ, much as the priests brought offerings to the Lord in the temple. So this morning, as we go into this week ahead of us and the rest of our life, just go knowing that you've been chosen by God to be part of his kingdom building, temple, people, nation, whatever. You're a precious and chosen stone, one of many, connected to Christ, directed by Christ for a purpose of bringing glory to his name and lifting Jesus up that all people might come into that kingdom he's building. That's who we are. We're chosen to be together for the purposes of Christ. Lord, we pray today that you would help us to understand our place in your kingdom and in your work, your people. Lord, help us to, to fulfill our calling to make your church strong and beautiful with a mission that all people might come to know your son chosen cornerstone as their Lord and Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. Stand together for Abel.
What God has made us is a wonderful thing. It's nothing to get, you know, proud about or egotistical about because it's grace alone that brought us here. It's grace alone that helps us stand. But how beautiful it is to know that because of Jesus, we are God's people. We're chosen. We're his bride. We're loved by him. We're the body of Christ. He's the head of us. We're a temple where the spirit dwells. And God does it all because he loves us and he's given us grace. So as you go into this week, go knowing that you're chosen by God for a purpose, to get you know, to give God glory, to do God's work, and you don't go alone. You're not a, an ember sitting out there by yourself. You're part of a fire that's burning to bring glory to God. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen.